taking the MCAT multiple times isn't a problem. The issue is taking it multiple times and never seeing any improvement. Ask Dr. Gray pre-med Q&A brought to you by Blueprint MCAT. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Thank you for having me. I'm wonderful. It's a pleasure to have you. What can I help you with? Um, I came with a few questions I would like to ask. Um, the first question is, if I take a, a gap year and I do an MPH, would that still make me a strong applicant for medical school? So explain the question a little bit more because I haven't heard it put that way. Will that still make me a strong applicant? What do you mean by that? So right now I'm taking the MCAT. I'm a senior. Okay. And, uh, I've taken it a couple of times and I haven't gotten the score I wanted. So I'm taking a gap year now. Okay. At, and I'm applying to an accelerated one year master's in public health. Okay. And I have good GPA, good resume. The only thing I needed was the MCAT, but I want to know if that in total will make me a strong applicant still, even though I had to take multiple MCATs. Okay. So it has nothing to do with the MPH. It has to do with multiple MCAT scores. Yeah. That was going to be the second question I asked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that is the question. The MPH is, is irrelevant. Right. Do an MPH yeah. if you want. Don't do an MPH if you don't want. That has nothing to do with your medical school application. It, it won't yeah. help your application. It won't hurt your application unless you do really bad in it. Um, multiple MCAT scores for the far majority of schools is not a problem. What they want to see is that you do better. Right. That <laughs> Ultimately, you get a good score eventually. Uh, mm -hmm. I've talked to students who have taken the test five times and finally, 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 they figured it out and got like a 510, 512, and they got multiple acceptances to medical school. So taking the MCAT multiple times isn't a problem. The issue is taking it multiple times and never seeing any improvement. And as I was saying, I'm currently studying it for it once again. Is there anything you suggest that I should be doing differently? I tried numerous programs and I still get testing anxiety on the day of the test. Yeah. The, the question ultimately is what's going wrong, right? And, mm -hmm. and maybe it's test anxiety. Uh, when you are doing your full length exams, your practice exams, are you doing well? Yes. Uh, I've been scoring near my target scores almost every single time. And then when I get to the test, I get nervous. I start rushing. And then I ultimately score lower than what I've been doing originally. Significantly lower or like two points lower? Uh, significantly lower. <laughs> okay. So that tells me that you're doing everything right. You just have test anxiety. You need to work on that. Have you mm -hmm. talked to a psychologist, a psychiatrist about test anxiety? Not to psychiatrists, but I've talked to MCAT tutors and... Yeah, you, you need to talk to a professional, like a psychologist or psychiatrist, to talk about test anxiety. Okay. There, there are things that you can do to help you control, not get rid of, but control your test anxiety. Okay. That's what you need to work on. You can, you can continue to take practice tests, continue to learn content... And every single time you step in the, into that testing center, all of that anxiety is going to come back. Okay. So you need ways to manage that. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be courses. It's not going to be tutors. It's not going to be anything. It's going to mm -hmm. be helping the brain. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hel helping those thoughts rushing through your head that, that are causing you to do poorly on the MCAT. Okay. And is it common to, for someone to have testing anxiety only for the MCAT? Because Heck I yeah. never Okay. <laughs> Heck yeah. And it gets worse every single time you have to retake it. Yeah. Because <laughs> now now that there's this seven uh time cap on taking the MCAT, every single time you take the MCAT, 
is counting towards one of your seven lives, right? If we want to talk about <laughs> a cat's seven lives, the M cat has only has seven lives. Uh, all all rather regular cats have nine lives. Uh, the M cat only has seven lives. And every time you go in there and take it and your test anxiety gets the best of you, you are removing one of those lives. And so every time you go back, the stakes are that much higher. Yes. On top of all the normal pressure that the MCAT brings, that this is the test between you and this career that you want to be a physician, right? That's that's normal anxiety. So, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, it's it's very normal for people to all of a sudden have have test anxiety around the MCAT. Okay. And I already applied to medical school uh in may and i okay. withdrew my application after noticing that i did poorly on the exam okay does that have any consequence at all no just wasting money <laughs> giving, yeah. giving donations to the AAMC <laughs> that they don't need yeah <laughs> yeah what okay. hey, let, let's talk about specifics if, if you if you want and you can tell okay. me i don't want to talk about it. that's fine but what is your mcat score what's the highest mcat score uh that i have official or that i've yeah, got official the- Oh, that's very low. Um, Below 500? Yes. And that's the scary part because I was scoring between a 510 and a 514 before my my exam. And I don't know what happened that day. Well, you do know what happened. It's called test anxiety. (laughs) What do you mean you don't know what happened? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So, So we need to work on that. I, I would, as as soon as we get off this call, reach out. Are, are you still in school now or no? Yes, I'm currently a senior. Yeah, so I would reach out to um, whatever resources the school has and see if they have a, a psychologist or a psychiatrist that they would recommend for you to go talk to. Okay. And what else? Do you think? Do you think do you what? Think- that's the main cause, and or is there other things that could be involved as well? What else? You're you're doing well on practice tests. You're crushing your practice tests. Five ten to five fourteen is amazing. If if yeah. those are real numbers, and it's not just like oh one time I got a five fourteen, every other time it was less than five hundred, right? <laughs> I I get lots of those kind of hyperbole kind of students as well. But if if you're consistent ish around 510 514 then you should expect around that and that's why i asked like is it significantly below or is it like two points below if you're between 510 and 514 and you get a 508 i'm like yeah that's that's expected Mm -hmm. so uh but less than 500 right scoring that much lower that's not expected and 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 you need to work on that so the the thing that you need to do between now and while you're getting some help and when you retake is not letting the knowledge and test taking skills that you've built up go to waste, right? You still need to stay in there. You still need to be doing practice questions, reviewing content for questions that you're still struggling with so that when it comes to getting back in gear for the full MCAT, you're you're still on top of your game. In the meantime, do you suggest that I, during my gap year, do anything besides the the masters as well? So I continue shadowing and doing research. Yeah, I, I would do as much as you can. Um, clinical experience, shadowing. It doesn't mean you have to do twenty hours a week, <clears throat> but as much as you can. Yeah. That was just my main concern that I had. It's been a, it's been on my mind for a while. Yeah, obviously, right? If if you're saying you have good grades, you have good experiences, mm-hmm. and the one thing holding you back is this stupid MCAT, then <laughs> obviously it's going to be on your mind. How many times have you taken it officially now? Twice. Oh, okay. Only twice. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully third time's a charm, right? Yeah, as, as the saying goes. <laughs> Uh, yes. But yeah, I, I think I, I think um, talking to someone about test anxiety around the MCAT will really, really help. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. What and else? Then, Is that it? Do you suggest any additional like study materials that, that would be helpful for me? 
I, it just depends on what you've used so far, right? I'm a big fan of Blueprint. They sponsor this this series, the yeah. Ask Doctor A series. Um, their flashcards, their full length exams, uh, yes. their study planner tool. That's the core of what what everyone I think should be using. Um, UWorld. Uh, I'll mention UWorld because I, I think UWorld is a great uh, kind of adjunct um, in terms of questions. Their explanations are are second to none almost. So. Um, uh, that's probably all you need. Full length exams and questions are are really the the prep for you. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, uh, U World has been pretty helpful for me. Good. And uh, yeah, I've been uh, I used the mapped for when I applied for medical school. Nice. And was that helpful? Yeah, that was really helpful. I was with uh with Scott Wright. He was really helpful. Oh, good. So yeah. you use mapped advising, not the app. I use both. Yes. Nice. I use the app and the advising. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So we know your application was solid. It's just <laughs> that darn MCAT score. Yes, that is very true. All right. Well, simple phone call, some emails, hopefully will get, get you set up with talking to someone to really help you think through what's going on in that brain of yours and why the MCAT is freaking you out on test day. Um, yeah. I, I, therapy's awesome. I, I, I see two therapists because why not? Um, so <laughs> it's, it, it really helps to just talk things out and, and get some tools to really help you, uh, help you manage the test day. Do you suggest any other books that you've written besides the, the <laughs> pre-med pre playbooks that I have here? All of them. Do you have the new one, the application process one? I have... The medical school interview, medical school personal in statement, and the MCAT. I don't have the. Yeah, you need you need the newest one, the application process yeah. one. Yeah. Okay, I'll get that's, my hands on that one. That's this one here. Okay. Yeah, I'll use that one also when I apply, hopefully in May. Yeah. That's that's my newest pride and joy. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that's all I got for you. Yeah, I appreciate it.